Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and hopefully folks can see my screen. Uh, yeah. So, hey, everyone. Uh, as, as was mentioned, my name is Neil Moshiri. I'm an assistant teaching professor in the computer science and engineering department at UC San Diego. Uh, and then my talk is going to be focused on um, some methods that my lab developed using the NSF funding uh, for speeding up viral genomic uh, analysis. So specifically, today's talk is just going to focus on how we've enabled massively scalable reference guided multiple sequence alignment of complete viral genomes. Uh, we actually have done multiple other accelerations as well that I just didn't have time to talk about today, but I'll kind of end with a link to my website if folks are curious about how else you could speed up other aspects of this type of analysis. Um, but yeah, so let's let's get started. So just to give a little bit of context, here's a framework for a standard viral phylogenetics workflow. And you know, before I even talk about this, viral phylogenetics is very important to be able to study how is the virus mutating over time? Uh, you know, how is it kind of branching off? How are the like different samples that we collect all over the world related? Um, there's a ton of uses in the world of viral molecular epidemiology that are out of the scope of this talk. But generally, having a phylogeny inferred from viral genomes is very useful to have. Um, so typically, the workflow starts like this, where you start with a bunch of unaligned viral genome sequences, which I'm showing over here. Uh, the first step is usually multiple sequence alignment, where you try to kind of place these gaps in the different uh, kind of positions of each of the sequences to get them to line up better. And this gives you uh, some notion of sequence homology after you do this. And then given the multiple sequence alignment, we can then perform phylogenetic inference to try to infer an unrooted evolutionary relationship between these sequences. And then typically after that, we do what's called rooting to determine what is the most likely common ancestor of all of the sequences. And that kind of then tells us what was the forward in time evolutionary history of these sequences. Then maybe you'll do some additional downstream analyses. So maybe you do transmission clustering, um, there's there's a lot of other analyses that you can do on the phylogeny and on the sequences, um, but yeah, this is kind of the, the the building blocks of how you do all these other analyses. So typically, these steps over here are the key computational bottlenecks: the multiple sequence alignment and then the phylogenetic inference. Uh, in today's talk, I won't be talking about phylogenetic inference. I'm just going to be zooming in on multiple sequence alignment. Uh, so some context, multiple sequence alignment, this is what's called an NP-complete computational problem. Uh, what that means, there's a very technical computer science term, but basically what this means is there's no polynomial time exact solution. So basically, if you gave me a bunch of sequences uh, and asked me to come up with the optimal multiple sequence alignment, there is no way to do this in polynomial time. It's very, very slow. Uh, heuristics have been developed to provide optim, uh, to provide approximate solutions. Uh, so, for example, you might have heard of cluster omega, muscle, map. These are some kind of standard tools that are used in this space. Uh, however, even these heuristics, they generally scale quadratically with respect to the number of sequences. Uh, and for context, the JSA database, which is the database where most folks are storing uh, their full SARS-CoV-2 genomes, this database is growing extremely rapidly. And as of today, we have over 15 million SARS-CoV-2 sequences available from all over the world. The next epidemic is going to be more and kind of sequencing genomes in real time. This is going to be a tool that hopefully we continue to use in, in the viral epidemics to come. So we can expect this to be even more significant of a big data problem. Uh, so currently, with these tools like Cluster Omega, Math, and Muscle, we're looking at runtimes of decades to centuries, which, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, if we're trying to do real-time molecular analysis, decades or centuries is just a little bit too slow. Uh, so how can we speed this up? Well, it turns out that the problem is actually a little bit easier than what we're trying to solve. Uh, multiple sequence alignment in general is kind of assuming no homology of the sequences whatsoever. This is the time it takes to align completely arbitrary sequences. But with SARS-CoV-2 and with viruses in general, we have a much simpler problem, right? We have a lot of sequence homology. And even if the virus is mutating um, you know, significantly across the world, every single viral sequence that we obtain is going to be almost identical to the reference genome. It's not going to be exactly identical, but it's going to be almost identical. So we actually are facing a much simpler computational problem, which is multiple sequence alignment of highly similar sequences. 
So how can we use that feature to speed up this analysis? Uh, we can do what's called an align to reference approach. So instead of just trying to align everything with each other all at once, what we could do is do individual pairwise alignments against a reference genome. So in this figure, uh, the thicker green bar at the top represents the reference SARS-CoV-2 genome, and each of these other colored genomes represents a sequence that I collect uh, from the real world. And I want to align each of these to the reference genome. And what I can do is just one by one by one by one, I can independently align each of these genome sequences against the reference genome, which I could do each of these fairly quickly. And I can do massive parallelization because each of these pairwise alignments to the reference can be done completely independently. So I can parallelize however many cores my computer has. I can throw that many at this problem. And then once I've computed all those pairwise alignments to the reference, I could use the reference genome. I can kind of use its anchors, uh, its positions as anchors to create the columns of my multiple sequence alignment. So for example, maybe I'll start with the first position of the reference genome and I'll see, okay, well in the red sequence, this is the letter that aligned to that position. In the orange sequence, this is the letter. In the pink sequence, this is the letter. In the blue sequence, this is the letter. And I can kind of merge all of those letters into one column of my multiple sequence alignment. And then I can do the same thing for the second position of my reference genome, the same thing for the third position, fourth position, all the way across and kind of position by position by position, I can build my multiple sequence alignment. So this idea, this is really good because it is massively parallelizable and it scales linearly with the number of sequences rather than quadratically. So much better scalability as well. So do we have to implement this approach from scratch? We actually don't. Uh, it turns out that if you kind of step back and think about this problem, this is really equivalent in a sense to the long read mapping problem. So let's just kind of step back and rethink what is the problem that we're tackling. Our input is a reference genome and a bunch of long sequences that are very similar to the reference genome. And our output is an alignment of each of those sequences against the reference genome. This is exactly the same computational problem as mapping long reads. So instead of having to reinvent the wheel, we could just kind of build off of all of these really advanced techniques that folks have built uh, to solve the long read mapping problem and just kind of apply it to this context. So to that aim, I developed a tool called Viral MSA. And what it does is it just wraps around existing long read mappers to perform this reference guided multiple sequence alignment. So it kind of treats each of those uh, genomes that I've collected as long reads, and it treats the reference genome as a reference genome, and it just calls that read mapper. Uh, I wrap against a few different read mappers just to demonstrate flexibility, but I mainly uh, suggest people use Minimap2 for both speed and accuracy. And then given those read mapping results, I can then, or given the mapping results, I can then just kind of compile them into a single multiple sequence alignment. Uh, so yeah, all you have to do to run Viral MSA is you just give Viral MSA a reference genome and a bunch of sequences to align, and it'll automatically handle indexing the reference genome. Uh, maybe if you give it uh, an accession number, it'll handle downloading and indexing the reference genome. It'll handle all of the pre-processing and all the downstream stuff, and it'll just output, uh, it, it'll call the read mapper, it'll merge the results into the multiple sequence alignment, and it'll just output a single standard FASTA file that is your multiple sequence alignment. So how does it do against existing tools? Well, if we uh, we did a benchmark experiment where we compared the runtime of viral MSA wrapping around uh, Minimap2 compared against uh, Viruline, which is an existing aligned to reference approach, but that just kind of implements its own from scratch aligned to reference. Uh, and we also uh, compared against MAP, which is typically considered one of the you know most commonly used multiple sequence alignment tools. So in this plot on the horizontal axis, I have number of sequences. On the vertical axis, I have total execution time in seconds. And this was done on complete SARS-CoV-2 genome sequences. So genome length roughly 29,000. Uh, and we can, as we can see, the blue line, which is viral MSA, is orders of magnitude faster than the existing tools. Um, compared to Viruline, which is also scaling linearly, uh, we're getting, and by the way, this, this plot is log, uh, log scale plot. So compared to Viruline, we're roughly like a thousand times faster-ish. Uh, and with math, we're not 
quite as much faster, but you can see that because MAPT scales quadratically, uh, our speed up with respect to MAPT is actually increasing as time progresses. So even at just a thousand sequences, we hit roughly a thousand times faster and that gap kind of in increases. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, fast is good, but what's the point if it doesn't give me good alignments? Well, we also compared the accuracy. What we did was uh, we took the multiple sequence alignment computed by MAPT, took the multiple sequence alignment computed by viral MSA on a bunch of hand curated alignments from HIV, uh, yeah, HIV, Ebola, and I'm blanking on the third virus. Um, but, but basically, we took viruses that we had curated alignments from the Los Alamos. Oh, actually, no, this plot is from just HIV-1. Uh, from the Los Alamos National Lab, we took their curated uh, multiple sequence alignments, and we used that as ground truth, and then saw how does MAPT and viral MSA compare against the ground truth um, curated multiple sequence alignment. Uh, so if we compute pairwise distances of the sequences that we get in our alignment, and then we do a mantle test for accuracy, you know, we, we find the correlation between our pairwise distances and the pairwise distances calculated directly from the true uh, multiple sequence alignment, we see that the correlation is negligibly different. So here, you know, we get a correlation coefficient of like 0.994 for viral MSA compared to 0.997 uh, for pairwise distance calculation. And actually, when we calculated phylogenies, um, the phylogenies inferred using the viral MSA multiple sequence alignments were actually slightly higher topological accuracy than those estimated from MAP. So negligibly so, but still what we're showing is that these are kind of essentially equivalent in terms of accuracy for all intents and purposes. Uh, so the conclusion, viral MSA, it's a tool that enables rapid multiple sequence alignment of ultra-large viral data sets. It's open source, you can find it on GitHub. Uh, and you know, please consider using it in your viral analyses. Um, and yeah, and acknowledgements. Uh, I wanna thank Heng Lee, he's the developer of Minimap2 and it's really, his expertise in developing Minimap2 that enables viral MSA speed and performance. Uh, I want to thank the NSF grant that supported, and the, the research was also supported using Google Cloud Platform research credits. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'll save time for any questions, or I'm happy to end it here.